15 minutes a game. I'm Julian, we got Steve, and we got Javon today. Um, welcome to our Easter edition of 15 minutes a game, MLB edition, y'all. So today, um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about the Dodgers. They wrapped up their uh, four game series in Colorado. I know I called a sweep, but they lost, dropped the opener and won three straight. I just wanna get you guys' take on the Dodgers performance. Yeah, we almost we almost called that. It's got to give props to Steve, though. I had the games wrong. I said Bowers' game would be the loss, but I'll, I'll, I'll I mean, I guess I'll take the victory being right. Yeah, you a, were. That was a weird series. How it all started with Cody Homer being ruled a single, him getting thrown out, and then McKinstry hitting the first homer for the Dodgers this season, with being an inside the park homer. Yeah. So it was just interesting series at Coors Field. Definitely some wacky stuff going on out there. Who do you think should take the blame for that Cody single? Was it Bellinger's fault or JT's? I say JT. That's that's what I say. Cause, yeah. Because even when he's running back, Cody is telling him, no, go, go. And he just keeps going back. You know? Focus mm. lasered on first base. So yeah, I mean, I was I was happy with. Uh, oh, sorry, Steve. No, 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 no. I was just saying, you know, they lost a run there, and then Seager had the error that cost a run. So, you know, you 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 can't get too upset. You know, Dave Roberts said it best. He's like, this isn't really how we play. And then you see they they swept the remaining three games. So yeah, it was very un Dodgers like to to play kind of sloppy there in the field. But I was still pretty happy with with the outcome of the, of the weekend, considering we dropped the first one. I, I was most impressed with uh, Julio today, actually. So I, I thought he know. threw the ball really well. Yes. And if he's going to anchor down the back end of the rotation, throwing you know performances like that, especially in a tough place to pitch up there in Coors Field. So the other note I had here was just the offense, leaving some guys on base, I think, that day, uh, the first game, we left like 15 or 18 runners on base. So we can just improve on that. I, I think, you know, Dave Roberts and Andrew Friedman will be real happy. Yeah, if it was a young team, you know, you might be worried, but there's still so many games left. I, I agree with you, Urias was, I think he was the best pitcher uh, of the four, even, and that's including Bauer going six, six no hit innings. Uh, which that was a little weird, but it is Colorado six, no hit innings. And he gives up some home runs. Then they bring in price for his Dodger debut. <laughs> he gives up back to back to back bomb. So it's good. They had such a huge lead. Um, and then like Julian said, uh, Zach McKinstry, uh, my buddies in group text were asking like, who is this guy? Uh, and honestly, I didn't even really know. Uh, but he, he had a good little series, three for seven, the inside the park homer, two RBIs, two runs. He, I think he's kind of supposed to fill that Kike void, right, and play. He told Roberts before the season started that he'll play anywhere. So I think, yeah, you know, if, if he can do that and, and come close to just being – bringing the energy that Kike brought, that'll, that'll mean a lot. Agreed. You got Javon. You have anything like who who impressed you guys this series for the Dodgers, like a pitcher or someone in the uh, yeah. I was on? yeah. I think Julio for me. The weird thing though with McKinstry, I don't know why they pinch hit for him when the bases were loaded in the top of the ninth. He had just hit a double too, and they I pinch know. hit for him. I I didn't get brought, that. And they brought Matt Beatty in. I was wondering who was also a lefty. Was it just? It must have been just an experience thing. I'm not sure. Yeah, I was listening to the radio and Vasse was saying that maybe Beatty handles 97 to 98 a little better. And that would be really the only reason they made that switch. Yeah, I guess, I guess that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. To a serious topic, you guys, the MLB just announced that they're pulling their all-star game from Georgia following Georgia's new uh, voting uh, legislation. 
And um, so I just want to get you guys' thoughts on that situation. Um, are you guys proud that the MLB s- stepped up to the situation and made a big move for themselves? And just your thought on where the All-Star game should go for 2021. Uh, I'll, I'll go. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I was doing a lot of research even before you brought this up as a topic, just figuring out exactly what Georgia did. Um, I think it's good that MLB took a stance, but I think I, I was reading today, the Washington Post was saying or wrote that 43 of the 50 states have also proposed uh, about 250 laws that would include voting restraints. So it, it's, it's just a thing of like, every time something comes up, what, what's going to happen? So I agree with the move, but I, I think you're setting a precedent to just con- constantly <laughs> change things if, if, if it's going to always be about political things. Um, I think a lot of people don't like politics and sports. Um, there's some times where I don't, and I'm just like, I just want to watch sports. I don't want everything to be political. Uh, but I think it's 2021. And, and if you don't want that, then you should not watch the sport anymore because it's not going to change. It's going to become more uh, relevant as, as years go on with each sport. So, Yeah, I, I was surprised to see it happen. I didn't. There was no like talks. It just kind of hit on the news headline, like the the MLBs making a, a move out of there. I was I was pretty shocked to see them do that. Kind of sucks for the Braves because I was doing a little research myself, and <laughs> like they're gonna blew out on a hundred million dollars doing this relocation for that franchise. So you know, it, it sucks that they had to lose the the all-star game and there had to be a loser in this situation. I do think the MLB made the right move and took a stand on this because not to make it too political, but we had a situation where our, our presidency and our election was almost hacked and rigged and stolen. So that's the foundation of democracy. And I wanted to see, um, you know, I was happy with it. Now, I, I agree with you in one sense, Steve, that this is kind of why the NBA is having some problems that people don't want to watch as much ratings dip uh, due to the fact that they have kind of um, branded themselves politically. So, you know, it's it's tough. It's, it's never really an easy situation. And, and I think it's good that um, we have those conversations and, and the MLB decided to, to step up. Yeah, I agree. I I mean, I think at the end, you're never, no matter what you're doing, just whether it's just like me as a person, right. Or the MLB, you can't please everybody. (laughs) So at the end of the day, do what you think is best. Um, To answer your other part of the question, I, I thought of a few places that might be cool uh, for them to move to Milwaukee would be one part of being in Atlanta was they were going to be able to honor Hank Aaron who passed away not that long ago. Uh, so he started with the Milwaukee Braves and he finished his career with the Milwaukee Brewers and made the all-star game in 75, his first year with the Brewers. Uh, so that would be kind of cool. They haven't hosted an all-star game since 2002. They got that cool slide in the outfield. Um, exactly. And then <laughs> a couple other choices, just, for fun Colorado just to see a lot of home runs they haven't had one since 98 and as I was watching the Angels game as you see behind me I thought Anaheim would be cool because they haven't had I mean they had one more recently in 2010 but I just thought Mike Trout Shohei you know Rendon they got some good players and and next year it'll be in LA for sure so those were my thoughts on that nice I like what, what do you think Jules I like that Milwaukee pick just to honor uh, Hank Aaron because I was going to say it sucks for the Braves, like Javon said, how they're losing the hundred million, but they also were planning to give a tribute to the legend Hank Aaron. So I like the Milwaukee Brewers pick. I was going to say LA and be selfish, but I'll go (laughs) back to back ones. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah, we're getting it next year. (laughs) (laughs) What do you think, Javon? 
about where a cool All Star game would be. Yeah. Seattle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Pacific Northwest. I feel like that's a cool area. So. I agree with you. <laughs> it's a stay on the subject behind Steve, the Angels. Uh, t- to let go let go of baseball he's going to stop playing just because he's lost the desire and love for the game I just want to get you guys as quick thoughts on that and um do you guys agree with it and just your thoughts on his brave decision how are we doing on time uh we got four minutes left we're I think we should be good okay cool well I'll jump in real quick on this one um you know i I get, I I read what he said, his Instagram posts and he lost the love for the game and he felt like he just couldn't do it anymore. I think it's just hard for me to relate to that because we all kind of have a job to do day to day. And a lot of us aren't passionate about our work. Um, And, you know, maybe he found a different direction, something that he, he is more passionate about. That's I'm sorry. He lost the love for the game. I mean, he had a great opportunity to, to use his, I guess you could say, a platform as a baseball player to influence himself and his family. But, hey, you know, it's fine. He went in a different direction. I, I wish him the best. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, not that your take is completely opposite of mine. Uh, I am super passionate about my job. You know, I, I work with kids. I've been building programs in Beverly Hills for a few years. And I work with quite a bit of people that, literally just collect checks. They're, they're not around, they're not in the office, can't get in touch with them. And for somebody that works really hard, it's, it's really frustrating. And they all make a lot more money than me. So, so they're not people on my level or below, they're people above me. Um, so for somebody who, who said in his post, you know, I wanted to get here because I felt I had to prove these people wrong, basically certain people, his coaches from the past, uh, but he, he doesn't have the love for it anymore. So he, he's leaving, he's retiring. Uh, I respect that more than him just going out there collecting checks, not really caring when you got guys like, you know, when you got Mike Trout, an MVP guy on your team that's busting ass uh, every day. So I, I respect that he <laughs> left. Uh, he made a couple million in his short career. Good for him. I don't know what he's going to do afterward, but I'd rather have him, you know, leave and, and, leave on on his terms than just collect checks i i can't stand when people do that i agree with you steve just to make it short just how he he felt and was honest to joe madden and his team that he's not he doesn't have the desire doesn't have the love to play just not wasting their time and also not wasting his time and he's able to focus and regather his energy into something that he truly cares about now so like i respect that from him yeah. Yeah. And same here. There you And I appreciate you guys. Um, check us. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram. We have uh, Apple Podcasts. Please. Uh, TikTok. TikTok. We out here. We got all this content for you guys. And thank you for joining us once again. Have a good one.